it. I let the experts answer it, but I was, uh, was kind of curious uh, what the answers would be and how they described it, but it's what they did is they put a corner reflection. In there. Now it's three dimensional so it's actually a cube corner reflector not just the two dimensions that I've drawn but the neat thing about it all the astronauts had to do was just to place it on the ground and then now today all NASA has to do is shoot the laser beam and hit that box <clears throat> and they got this wide laser beam that comes out and by the time it hits the moon it's almost as wide as the moon so you can't miss the box <clears throat> and so it's really easy uh, you got to just do a reasonably point at the moon and you'll hit the box and it will come right back to you no matter what angle it was set at and no matter what angle the moon is and so that's why we have this great data today that NASA has this automated program and they just send out a laser beam every day and measures what's the distance to the moon what's the distance to the moon what's the distance to the moon and so it measures it to under uh, under an inch and so we know the distance to the moon <clears throat> and measured every day since whatever Apollo mission that was. It wasn't the first one. It wasn't the Apollo 11. I think it was up the Apollo 14 that, that uh, left it on the moon. But No, maybe it was 12. Well, I don't know which Apollo mission it was. But one of them left the corner reflector for, for just that reason. <clears throat> and so there's your corner reflector. A good example of a corner reflector is any of these reflecting materials. So here's a, a, a simple reflector off an old bicycle. But you see them on bicycle, you see them on cars, you see what they call reflecting tape that they'll, they'll stick on a, uh, uh, a pole or something. And they're little tiny corners. And they're kind of fun to look at. So if you've got a reflector, take a, mo a moment, look, look on the, uh, the lenses of your, uh, like your tail lights. Your, your tail lights, uh, usually above and below them, uh, where the light is not, uh, have, you know, this kind of corner reflectors. And of course, what's nice about it, if this is your bike, that if a car is over here and shines its headlights, if it was just a mirror, it would reflect off and go that way. And the car wouldn't see the bike. Now, somebody else would see the bike, but that doesn't do any good for the car driver. And the reflect reflector works best because it hits a corner reflector and bounces and goes back to the driver. And so the light from the driver then hits a corner reflector which goes back to the driver. And it doesn't matter where the driver is, it will always go back to the driver. And so it's a very simple application of the law of reflection, but also a very, 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 very useful, as simple as it may be. Well, that's probably enough time with our flat mirrors. Like I said, here's where your author kind of leaves you hanging a little bit and says, now, what if the mirror is curved? It's really the same logic. Harder geometry, but it's still logic. Where is the image? Well, let's see if I can kind of help set this up. And it looks like I'm going to run out of time. So we'll continue this conversation into Monday and work out the geometries of some different scenarios. Uh, it turns out there's four really good scenarios to talk about here. So let me start with what I'm going to call concaved mirrors. As the name implies, again, I'm going to steal this name from mathematics. Um, what is a concave surface versus a convex surface? And so here's another nice mirror that I will probably end up showing you on Monday. But this polished surface, see how it's curved inward from your perspective? This inward is called a cave. Just like you think of as a, as a bear hibernating in a, in a cave. If you get to a cliff and the rocks go in, that's a, that, that's a cave. And if they go really in, it's a, it's a real cave. It's where you could spend all, all winter in here. And so where the bear can go is a cave. Now if I turn it around, it bows out to you. And so again, if you're standing on the end of a, uh, or the bottom of a cliff and the rocks come and they flex out towards you and go back, you would say it's convex. And so this is a convex shape. This is a concave shape. Us older people, right? We're convex. Our billies stick out and they, they roll outward. So let's talk about both of these and we'll just get concave for, for now. And I have then, not a surprise, a mirror that has a concave shape to it. And so this 
is kind of like the one I was just using. It, it, it's got a little magnet I can stick to the board. Um, and it's got a polished surface, that's the mirror. And if I hold it this way, you can kind of see it dips downward here. So if I were to hold it as the light comes in this way, it's hitting a concaved surface. And there's something kind of neat about the concaved surface. Let me power down the lights. Uh, maybe that's too much for one step. Let me do that one for a moment. Let me change this a little bit. And so instead of having one laser beam, I've got five laser beams up here. And let me put this concave mirror uh, maybe I'll put it at an angle this way for just a second. But see how the lights come in and they hit the surface. I'll call that a reflection. So each one is reflecting. But because the surface is curved, all five of those hit at a different angle. Now, it's still true about the law of reflection. It's still true that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. But they're going to reflect differently because all five of them hit at a different point on the curvature. That is, they have a different angle. Now, let me just hold it kind of level right there. And you can see they come back and they all tend to merge right there. If I were to draw a picture of this, it might look like this. Uh, here's the concave surface. And so here's my, my mirror. Uh, but it's what I would call a concaved mirror. Uh, maybe just for a reference, let me put a center line. I'll call that the optical center, the optical axis. And if I look at these five beams, I'll draw the one down the middle first. Uh, then I'll draw this top one. And then I'll draw one below it. And then I'll draw the second one above it. And then the second one below it. So those are my five beams. And the first beam, again, using the law of reflection, would look something like this. It would come in, and then right here, at this part in the mirror, you could say the mirror is straight up and down. Now, I know the mirror is curved, but let's not look at the whole mirror. Let's just apply the law of reflection right here. I would say I'm hitting it at an incident angle of zero. Now, remember, the incident angle is the angle between the ray and the normal. And so this is the normal. This optical axis is the normal. And the ray is along there. So I would say the incident angle is zero, so the reflected angle is straight back. And I don't know if you could quite see that. I tried to change it a little bit, but it comes in and goes straight back. If I block the other top and bottom ones, there we go, it's going straight back. Or at least nearly straight back. If I make it go too straight back, you can't really see it because it gets right on top of itself. So I don't like to do it exactly uh, straight back. But it's pretty, pretty darn close to straight back. Now, let's draw the one that is right above it. And so this one is going to hit. Uh, you can see that it's curved around at that point. And so the normal would be back to here somewhere. And so here's some geometry, in case you've forgotten. Right, the, if you have a curve, a circle, and you draw perpendicular to that circle, that's the radius of the circle. In other words, the radius is perpendicular to the circumference of a circle. So I'm going to put a little C right here to say that if I draw the normal, it would go right back to the center of the, of the circle. This, this little piece right here, this concave shape, is a piece of a big circle. And there's a center to that circle. And so drawing the normal would be the same as drawing the radius. And so it'll go back to the center of the circle. So this does hit at some small angle. And so when it reflects, it would go back that. And one of the first thing I noticed from the geometry here is this ray does not go back on itself. It also does not go back 
through the center of the circle, it goes back at some point that when it hits this optical axis is something less than the radius of the, of the circle. Now here's some good news. Down here for the one that's below, if I draw the normal here, again it would go to the center of the circle, and I would think it would be exactly the same symmetry below as it was above, and so this, these two would then cross at the same point, which by the way is the same as the middle one, and so right now I'd say all three of those seem to cross at a common point. And that common point, as I'm trying to illustrate with the geometry here, is not the center of the circle. Okay. So, where is it is a question I want to figure out. Now, let's draw the second ray above the center. Now, the second ray above the center would hit here. And because the mirror is curved over more, when I draw the normal, and I'll say it again, the normal, would go right towards the center of the circle. This angle of incidence here is now bigger than here. Roughly it's twice as big because I have now gone up twice as far and this curvature is kind of consistent and so I would say that's twice the angle. So that means the reflected beam would look something like this it would reflect at twice the angle. Now it's twice as high up with twice the angle so it ends up crossing at that same distance out as this one and so this top ray actually goes to that same point. Now I didn't really prove twice the angle, I, I, we wouldn't have enough time for that but I'm hoping my little experiment over here shows that. Isn't the rays all meeting right there where the one in the center goes right back, the one right above goes here also, and the one twice as much has twice the angle and it ends up being at the, at the same point. And I would say by symmetry, the fifth one down here at the bottom would be kind of doing the same thing, that if I drew a normal, it would go back to the circle. This angle here would be twice that angle, so the fact that it's twice as far down but twice the angle makes it end up being the same distance right there. And so all of these rays meet at that same point. So I'm trying to show you both by experiment and the law of reflection in my drawing that there is this magical place on this shape. This place right here is then called the focal point. This is where all that light is going to meet, and I should be a little careful with that. This is where the light meets as it came in parallel. Do you see how all five of those were parallel for this would to work? If they had been spreading out or at different angles, totally different story. But for five beams or three beams or seven beams or eight beams that come in parallel, they will hit this concave mirror, they will reflect off, and they will go to this magical point which we will now call the focal point. And that focal point, I'll change colors here, is a certain distance away from the mirror. And so let's call that distance its focal length. Uh, let's give it a symbol of F. And usually, as we do our geometry, we're more concerned about the length than the point. Although we got to draw our lines, we need to know where the point is. So we have this focal point and this focal length. How far is this magical point from the mirror? And partly because we're low on time, but partly because the geometry here is kind of long, let me give you the obvious answer that this focal length is clearly less than the radius of curvature. So if we label this whole thing as R, as the radius of this, then where is this focal length? Ah, and here's where that law of reflection comes into play. Let's go back to the first one I drew. Remember how I said, if it came in, and then this is the normal back to here, 
this angle of incidence would equal this angle of reflection. And so since the angle is the same, it would cut this right in half. This is the halfway point. Now, I know that's not a complete proof, but hopefully you'll kind of get the gist of it, that if these two angles are equal, then it cuts it at the halfway point. Um, and so we would say then that the focal length is half the radius of curvature. And so that's our lesson here from geometry, that there's this magical point. So if again, if I use the straight lines, and I use the law of reflection, and I use it quite a bit, I discovered that something is curved like this, it has a very special point. That, I didn't have that for the flat mirror. But the curved mirror, I do. And this is concave, although you'll see that the other curved mirror, the convex, also has this magical point. A little different, but still kind of has this magical point. Uh, but this magical point called the focal length is half the, the radius of curvature. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because here's kind of the grand finale of this. And I'm going to run out of time to do all the geometry, but let me at least set it up before I call it quits here for today. What if I then take this concave mirror And I take an object, and let me make my object an arrowhead. And for reference, why don't I put here the center of curvature, and then halfway the focal point. And so I'll remind myself that the focal point has a distance of half the radius. Okay, so that's the math behind it. And I'm standing over here somewhere. So here I am standing looking at the light. And so the light comes in, reflects off, and I ask the same question I did for the flat mirror. Where is the image? How big is the image? Now, like I said, I'm going to run short for doing... Uh, the actual geometry, but let me at least draw the picture here. Uh, I would say, let's continue to call this the height of the object. Let's continue to say that this is the distance of the object. So just like I did for the flat mirror, there's a certain distance from the mirror, that's the distance object. There's a certain height to my object, that's the object height. Then what about the image? And if I were to draw these rays, I'll change to a, yeah, I'll do red, why not? If I were to draw this ray, and so again, important thing to remember from early on, light is going in all directions, but I'm only concerned about two of them, because if I can figure out two, I can think of one as being going to my left eye and one going to my right eye, and the one that is straight across, the one that matches this discussion right here, it bounces off the mirror and goes where? Through the magical focal point. So this one would hit the mirror and bounce off and go through this magical focal point. So if I think about this as being one of the rays, maybe if I stand here, this is the ray that goes to my right eye, I need another ray to draw so that I can then trace them back using my binocular vision to say where do they appear to come from. So, do I know anything about a second ray? And I will say yes, I do. Because if we say the law of reflection is the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, then if you reverse the light, the same thing happens in reverse. Watch, come over here. In my drawing and in here, I had the light coming in parallel and it converged to this point. We called it the focal point. But what if I had a light bulb right here at the focal point? What if the light was spreading out and it hit the mirror? Then the reverse would take place. And again, since the law of incidence equals, I mean, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflect, reflection, that's the law of reflection, it would go straight and parallel. This is, this is how you want to build a flashlight or a headlight to a car. You want to put the light bulb right at the focal point. This is perfect because then the light 
hits the uh, reflecting surface on the back of the headlight or the, uh, the head of the flashlight bounces off and, and goes straight and so you get this nice beam. Although that's not quite true for a headlight I should say. The, the headlights you don't want a straight light. You do want it kind of spreading out over the road in front of you. So it, that's not quite true for, for a headlight. In fact uh, some of these flashlights, they're adjustable. I have one that you can turn it and change the distance between the light bulb and the reflector. And then, of course, you could make it go straight. And so you got a, like, a spotlight, but you can angle it back, and then it's a floodlight. And so you can, you can get those two effects. But my point is then, if the light had started here, it would go out, it would hit the mirror, and then it would go parallel. Knowing that, I can come over here to my drawing and say, I do know a second ray. The second ray would come down through the focal point. It would hit the mirror. And when it hit the mirror, where would it go? Parallel. And so it would go like that. And so if this ray is going to my right eye and this ray is going to my left eye, as these rays get to me, I would trace them back and I would say the image is right there. At least the top of the arrowhead. If I did this same logic with the middle of the arrowhead, I would get here. And if I did that logic with the bottom of the arrowhead, I would get there. And so what I would get is very interesting. I get an image that is actually in front of the mirror, not behind the mirror, in front of the mirror. It's upside down. It's smaller. And we'll work out a little formula for it. And I'll show you some good experiments. We're low on time, so I'll do the rest of this on, on Monday. But, I, you know, if I hold this up, and if you look into this mirror, and you focus your attention on something far away, I should point out, that, you know, I, I kind of drew an object that is kind of far away. <clears throat> and so maybe uh, there's a, the, the uh, uh, big chairs over here. And so if you kind of look at those big chairs, <clears throat> they're far away. You'll see that they are upside down, that they're smaller. Now, it's probably hard to tell that they're, they're actually right here in front of the mirror is where the image appears to be instead of here. So if you were, you know, near me, you would reach out and try to grab it right here. But, but th that's where they are. Well, we're going to have to call it quits here for now, but to, to answer the question mathematically, where is it and how big it is, we need to go through some geometry with those rays. And we'll see that we have a bunch of triangles. They are not congruent, they are similar, but that's okay. That, that gives us enough to answer the question, where is the image and how big is it? So, a lot more geometry on, on Monday, and of course, then remember, that's the last week. We got Monday, and then this Tuesday, and then, and then Wednesday. So, work really hard up to this point, and learn all of what we've done so far, because the other stuff coming at you will come quick, and it's pretty hard. At least some of it is, is pretty hard on Monday when we get into this geometry. But I'm going to help you with the geometry. So I, maybe that's the good news. With me helping you with the geometry, you'll be ready for the test on Tuesday because I'm going to do the geometry with you in the lecture. All right, well, I better call it quits for now, and I will see you Monday. Take care.